Esau was this. Who would serve a God like this? Nobody but King Jesus. He is worthy. Hallelujah. And I bless the Lord today. Praise God. For all he has done and all he's about to do. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. Now we're going to have a congregational song. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Praise team. All right. Come on, praise team. Feel like giving God the glory, all the glory, all the glory. I feel like giving God the glory, for He has been so good to me. Oh, I feel like, I feel like giving God the glory, all the glory, all the glory, all the glory.
God is everywhere you look. God is, I mean, God is everywhere you look and everywhere you go. God is your best friend always because God loves you so. Yes, yes. Yes.
love him on today. Hallelujah. We honor the Lord for being in our midst. Amen. We honor him for Pastor and Evangelist Wright. Hallelujah. Minister Carpenter, God bless you. Hallelujah. Father Holmes, bless you. Teacher Louie, bless you. Praise and worship leaders, God bless you. Amen to you, you and you, God's people. We say God bless you. Amen. Amen. There is a word from the Lord I don't plan on me before you long. Turn with me in your Bibles, if you will, to John chapter 21, verses 3 through 12. John chapter 21, verses 3, to 3 through 12. Amen. Glory be to God. I had the privilege of doing the commencement speech on yesterday at Millermont College, and that was a, was a success. Amen. 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 So many people were blessed uh, by the word of God. Amen. I believe that was the short, shortest matches I've preached. <laughs> it was all of 10 minutes. Amen. But God gets the glory. Yes. John chapter 21, verses 3 through 12. Let me know when you have it by saying amen. 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 And it reads, Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore. <coughs> Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, do you have any fish? They answered him, no. Verse 6, he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. I'm at John 21, verse 6 right now. Yes. He said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire in place, with fish laid out on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew. It was the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Cast your net, cast your net. On, the right side on the right side of the boat. Of the boat. Amen. Put your hands together for the word of God. Amen. Sister Sandy, I'm, I'm good right there with the air. I don't want them to freeze. Amen. I'm good right there with the air. Thank you so much. Amen. This, this scripture talks about the disciples toiling all night and being at a place where they have worked and plundered only to come up with nothing. And all of us have been there where it seems like we have been working and working and giving and giving, sweating, doing all that we know how to do only to come up empty. It's the worst feeling in the world to exuberate yourself and give everything that you have to everybody else. But at the end, your basket is empty. Somebody said you can't pour from an empty cup. 
you've got to be poured back into as well. And I'm here to tell you that we are living in a time where you've got to make sure that your net is full. And this is not the time to give up or throw in the towel. This is not the time to bring the boat back in and say, oh, well, I tried and nothing worked for me, so I quit. I, I dare you to look at your neighbor sitting right next to you and tell him this is not the quitting season. This, this is not the quitting season. This is the season where the enemy wants you to quit. Come on, can I talk to anybody that's been going through something? This is the season where the enemy wants you to give up. Up. And, and the, when you are really, really close to your breakthrough, I'm not going to be up here long. When you're close to your breakthrough is when you reach the most hell. When you are close to your breakthrough, it seems like nothing is working. Come on. That's when the bank account ends up on E. That's when your body starts acting up. You hadn't had a headache in months. Now you got a headache. Come on. You hadn't had a stomach ache in months. Now you got a stomach ache. Children been acting right all year. Now they want to act up. Come on. Husband been acting right all year. Now he want to act up. Boss been your friend all year. Want to take you to lunch and bring you started. Starbucks. Now all of a sudden they turning on you. I tell you to look across the room and holler at somebody and tell them because your net's about to be full. Your net's about to be full. When the enemy knows that your blessing is closer to you and it's right around the corner, he wants to send distractions. And get this, when we hear the word distractions, we always think of somebody else. We always think of something else interrupting our atmosphere. We never think of the distraction as being ourselves. Amen. Sometimes you can be your own distraction yeah, by the happened. thoughts that comes, come on, into your mind. That's why he said, I'll keep you where? In perfect peace if you keep your mind where? Stayed on him because when your blessing is right around the corner and your mind is not stayed on Jesus then the distractions of your thoughts infiltrate your mind only to infiltrate your mouth and then your mouth infiltrates your atmosphere say prove it preacher Proverbs 18 21 says death in life lies where in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof so whatever enters my mind enters my heart leaves my mouth I speak out of my mouth and then it poisons it pollutes my atmosphere if it's negative and then I see the results of that harvest what are you speaking into your atmosphere and, and Galatians 6 and 9 tells us not to grow what? Weary. Weary in doing good for in due season we'll reap if we do not faint. And here these disciples had every opportunity. They had every right to say we've clocked in and we can clock out. It's been eight hours. We're not working overtime. We've been on this boat in the dark all night long. Come on. They are hungry. They are tired. They haven't slept. They had every excuse to leave. But at the instruction of Christ, he said, cast your net on the right side of the boat, they followed the instruction. It's Youth Sunday, isn't it? Amen. Yes. Oh, youth, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. I, I dare the parents to look at, look at your child and say, she's coming for you. She, she coming for you. Yeah. At the instruction, he said, cast your net on the right side of the boat. Now, here's the thing. Some of us are not reaping the harvest because we've been casting on the wrong side. You looking for your harvest here when God wants you to plant it here. Come on, you trying to reap stuff over here, but that's not where he sent you. It, it's a funny thing. It's, it's, it's a funny thing that we have people. I'm not talking about y'all in here. Maybe it's somebody on Facebook. But we got people who will come to church Sunday after Sunday, but won't tithe into the people that they can reach. But will go and listen to Jake's online, but see it $100. Amen. Yes. Amen. He said, cast your net on the right side. 
on the right side of the boat, where are you casting your net? If you're casting your net and casting your net and you're coming up empty, maybe you need to check the side of the boat that you're casting on. Glory be to God. And maybe you need to check the spirit in which you're casting. Come on. Why? Because he loves a cheerful giver. And when God gives us instructions, we've got to be careful to follow the instruction. Jesus is Jesus. But guess what? They didn't know that it was him until after they reaped the harvest. You've got to know the voice of the Lord when he speaks even before the harvest comes. But because we don't know the voice of the Lord, we doubt his voice and then we doubt ourselves. Lord, is it you? Lord, oh, I, I heard a voice tell me to, 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 to give. I heard a voice tell me to, to, to buy Pastor Evangelist oh, lunch God. today. But I don't know because, you know, I got bills. Jesus. Well, you think the devil told you to do that? Right. Here's an elementary synopsis. The devil never tells you to do anything good. good. Say that again. He, he's never going to tell you to give. He's never going to tell you to pray. He's never going to tell you to read your word. He's never going to tell you to say hi to somebody. He's never going to tell you to show love. to. Somebody. He's never going to tell you anything good. Now, he'll give you half truth, but he'll never give you the whole truth. Amen. So whose voice are you listening to? Because he said, my sheep knows what? My voice. And a stranger's they will not follow. The disciples did not. It's right here in your Bible. Is it in your Bible? They didn't know that it was Jesus giving them the instruction, but they followed the instruction anyway. Are you willing to follow the instruction when you're at your wit's end and you have nothing else to do? You have nowhere else to go. Will you still follow the instruction? He said, cast your net on the right side of the boat. I'm here to tell you this morning, when you follow the instruction and you cast your net where God tells you to cast your net, he will cause you to live in the overflow. Glory be to God. He will cause your daily bread to be your yearly bread. He'll cause your daily bread, hallelujah, to be your lifelong bread. Your basket will never run empty. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Your oil will never run dry. You always live in the overflow. Hallelujah. You can swipe your debit card and not have to worry about what's in the bank. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You don't have to worry about going from paycheck to paycheck. When you follow the instructions and cast your net on the right side of the boat. Amen. Lord Jesus, amen. Casting your net. Cast it. These people were disciples. They were followers of Jesus. They were disciplined followers of Jesus Christ. They followed him. They were obedient to him. They labored for him. They did what he told them to do, but still they came up empty. Because you are a disciple, because you are a follower of Christ, does not mean that you'll never come up empty. But what it does mean by being a follower of Christ is that you have the benefit of calling on Abba Father. You have the benefit of saying, Lord, every Sunday I turn in that green and white envelope. Every Sunday I tithe. And because I am a tither, I accept. I expect my net, come on, I expect my net to be full, I expect my bank account to run over, I expect my doctor's report to be good, I expect my household to line up with the word of God, why, because he promised me that he would rebuke the devourer of for my sake, come on, not for your sake, for my sake, because it's my time, it's my sacrifice, they cast out their net and they reap the harvest. And, and it, the Bible tells us in, 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 the script, in the scripture it says in verse 12 Jesus said to them come and have breakfast and it says now none of the disciples dared ask him who are you for they knew that it was the Lord. This, this is the problem that I have because Deuteronomy tells us that you shall remember the Lord your God. Why? Because it is he, y'all don't know scripture, who has given you the ability to what? To cast out your net and get your wealth. But 
it, he said we should remember. Why do we seem like we forget? Because we just sung the song. How, what do you mean I forget? Because when you come in, we still got to tell you to. We still got to tell you to. We still got to tell you to open up your mouth. Come on. We still come in slow for we. We still coming in like we're doing God a favor by being here. Oh, glory be to God. Our prayer on this morning was that the people would not show up as if they're coming out of a ritual or obligation, but that you would show up knowing that I owe God this much. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, and we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. Cast out your net. Don't let the enemy make you feel as if your labor in the Lord is in vain. Glory be to God. Somebody needs to go back and do it again. You've been trying and you've been toiling and, and coming up empty and it, it seems like the more you work and the more you give it seems like the ends just aren't meeting. But I'm here to tell you God is an end meter today. He'll tie the knots together for you. He'll put the puzzle pieces together for you. Glory be to God. The Potter wants to put you back together again. You might be in the refiner's fire, but I promise you, you'll come out like gold. Glory be to God. You'll come out, hallelujah, shinier than you went in before. You might be looking dull now, but that's all right, baby. God's just polishing you. He's just making you over. Cast out your net on the right side of the boat. Go with me to John 2 and 5. I'm almost finished. John 2 and 5. John 2 and 5. It's Youth Sunday. And children, the thing about instructions is when Jesus gives you an instruction, when parents, teachers, the people at school, whomever give you an instruction, you've got to be careful to follow the instruction. John 2 and 5 says, his mother said to the servants, do what? Whatever. Do whatever he tells you. Glory be to God. Do whatever he tells you. This means that we don't get to pick and choose the instructions that we follow from people in authority. Is, I think I got about three amens amen. right there. Amen. We, we, we don't get to pick and, and choose, Shayla, when mommy says wash the dishes. We, that means we come now. We don't come an hour later. We, we, don't, we don't get to vacuum the floor it's your, uh, two hours after Miss April tells us to vacuum the floor. When she says vacuum, before she can get the M and vacuum out of her mouth, the she should hear the motor running. Come on, because we follow the instruction. You want to see God. God move in your life. Be quick to move when he tells you to do something. We got, we got to get rid of that slothful spirit. That, that spirit that we just move slow and we move when we want to move. Because let me help you. The way you move in your house is the way you move in church. That's right. That's right. The way you follow instructions in your house is the way you follow godly instruction. The same way you move slow when it's time to wash the dishes. The same way you move slow when the boss gives you an instruction on the job. When God tells you to pray, you move slow just like that. But here's the funny thing. When we need God, we want him to move so fast. We want him. When I call on the Lord, he will come. Yes, come on. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes. But can God say the same about thing you. about you? Can he say, when I call on Kay, she will come. come on. Amen. When I call on Ronnie, he will come. Or does he need to say, I got to set the alarm about three hours ahead. Lord Jesus. Because when I call you, you're not going to move. And I have need of you. See, we sing the song. If you can use anything, Lord. Use me. You can use me. And God is singing, I want to use you, but you're not in place. Come on. I, I'm tapping on you to use you. But you move too slow. I'm tapping on you to use you. But you're too busy with other people. I'm tapping on you to use you. But you're too busy with other things. And so you cast it out your net over here. But he's trying to get you to cast it over here. That's why it's not full. Am I talking to anybody? Amen. 
He says, whatever, she says, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. There's a blessing in following the instruction. Turn with me, I'm almost finished. Proverbs 13 and 1. There's a blessing in following the instruction. Amen. Even when you don't understand it, follow the instruction. On, on, on yesterday morning, on yesterday morning, I, I, I had an outfit picked out for the commencement ceremony the night before. Laid everything out. Uh, Sister Betty, laid, every, laid everything out. Laid, you would have been so proud of me. I laid everything out. The shoes, had my brooch out. Had, I mean, I had it laid. Changed my watch band. I had it laid out. Laid out, okay? Packed up by the door. Had two reminders in my phone to go to Walmart, pick up a new pair of stockings. I mean, I was ready to go. Oh, I was ready. I was ready. Okay. And I'm asleep. And about 6 a.m., I have a vision of me in a totally different outfit. Totally. Like, Lord just, the Lord just got an eraser and just... Right. Not that one. Yeah. Are you crazy, girl? You can't wear that. Hmm. So I jumped up out of bed. When my alarm went off and pulled out everything I saw in the vision. And my husband said, what happened to the outfit you had? I said, the Lord showed me something else. And so he said something about the outfit I had and, and the outfit I was going to wear the night before. So I tried on the first outfit that I did. And I said, see, he knows about the ducks in the corners that you might not know about. Come on out there. When you think you know it all, when you think you got it all together, when you yeah. think you got your I's dotted and your T's crossed and everything's just going to fit right. Get your mind away from the clothes. Everything's just going to fit right. God knows how the pieces are going to really come together when you are clueless about it. So when I put everything on, I said, this is why he showed me the vision of the other outfit. And when I put that on, everything flowed and I was so... Anastasia, I was so comfortable. As old people say, I was so comfortable. I was so comfortable. I felt good. I felt confident. And then on the way there, I said, he told me to wear blue because these are Millamont's colors. Wow. See, he thinks further ahead than you do. We are limited, but he is unlimited. And many times when he gives us instructions, we have set in our minds what we want, how we want it, what we want it to look like, what we want it to feel like. But God is smarter than you. I know you went to school. I know you got your books and everything lined up on your shelf. I know you got your degrees on the wall. But baby, he is smarter than you. He is omniscient and he is omnipresent. He knows all and he knows about all. He knows about things past, present, and things to come. Glory be to God. You can see what's right here now, but he can see what's around the corner. He can see what's happening years from now. If you follow his instructions. Yes, yes, that's the key. Proverb 13 and 1 says, Proverbs 13 and 1. So we, 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 can't, we can't get in our minds that we, we so grown and we can do what we want to do. Well, I'm 18. I can do what I'm grown now. Let me tell you something. I'm about to be 48 and I'm still not grown. I still got to call my mom and my daddy and say, what you think about this? Is this a good decision? Come on, because Psalm 1 and 1 says, Blessed is the man who seeks not the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the way of scorners. Come on, bless. you'll be blessed when you seek the counsel of godly people. And if you seek counsel, then you've got to do what? Follow the instruction. And when they tell you to cast your net on the right side of the boat, you can't go casting it on the left. Come on. Uh, all right. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 13 and 1 says, a wise son, and don't just take this to mean male, okay? This is male or female. A wise, so we're going to say a wise person. No, I'm not taking away or adding to the word of God. I'm trying to make it make sense to you. A wise person hears his father's instruction. But a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. A scoffer who is a person who makes fun of the word of God, who mocks the word of God. Are you a mocker? Do you make fun of God's word? Because that would be blasphemous. 
So a wise person hears their father or their mothers or their pastor or their leaders or their bosses or the bus drivers or the janitors or the hotel workers instructions and do what? They follow. They follow the instruction. Now I'm a, I'm, I'm gonna make the wives mad, Pastor. You got my back. If I gotta run out the door, just push it. I got my flats on and I can. <laughs> okay. I got your back. You got you got on flats? We can run. I got I'm gonna I'm look at Antonio when I say this. The the wives got to listen to the husband. <laughs> Because what she said in John 2, whatever he tells you to do, I'm trying not to laugh at some of the faces that I see. <laughs> Just do it. Can I tell you, can I tell you a story? <laughs> You've got to get out of your own way. That's it. And husband and wives, and, and, and husbands, come on, you don't think I'm going to forget about you. I'm going to get you. Well, Harpo toes, uh, Mr. Toe Sealy, sister, I'm going to get you. Okay? I'm coming for you. It's all right to laugh in the house of the Lord. We're learning something. Let me tell you something. He, he made you partners. And sometimes, ladies, husbands can see what you don't see. That's right. Sometimes husbands can hear what you don't hear. Amen. Men, you got to listen to your wives. Because mm -hmm. sometimes they can see and hear what is oblivious to you. So someone invited me somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. And I was going to go. There was nothing wrong with where I was going. It was at 6 o'clock and I would be done by after 7. Good. And I said, yeah, I'm going with Sister Sharita, such and such and such and such. Yeah, such and such at this time, and I'm going to park it, and I'm going to ride with her, such and such and such. And he looked at me, and he said, I don't think you should do that. And the, 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 indep the independent woman in me, I love her because she got her own. Okay? Stood up, and the Holy Spirit put in hands on my shoulders, literally. And he said, calm down. He said, say okay. Amen. I fixed my lips and I said, okay. He said, say it nicely. All right. Text, Sister Cherie. Sorry, I won't be able to do <laughs> Send. And after I sent it, I noticed I don't get texts and calls. Come on. And messages no more. See, the enemy knows right. that he set a trap for you. That's and God knows when the enemy set a trap for you. And sometimes when you're so busy being a woman, because we got the house, the car, the children, the job, the work, the church, the this, the that, the cow, the, the cat, the mule, the owl. All this stuff, the doctor's appointment, the dentist's appointment, the vision appointment, what we cooking for dinner, what we making for breakfast, got to pack husband lunch, got to do this, got to remind husband, got to remind the children, got to close the door, did we lock the door, did we set the alarm? Mm -hmm. And that's just, that's just one percent of our day. Sometimes we don't hear. That's right, that's right. So then God speaks to husband. Oh, I hear something. And let me, because your husband don't speak in tongue don't mean he don't hear God. You still need to listen. Who am I talking to? Amen. If he can use a donkey, and I'm not calling your husband a donkey. He's far more advanced. If God can speak to a donkey, come on, Balaam. He can speak to your husband, too. You've still got to follow the instruction. And we can't think that we're so grown that we can't listen to nobody. You can't say, husband, well, you're a woman and you're beneath me. And you can't tell me nothing. And she said, baby, I don't think you should go to the gym today. You might need to scale back and say, let me, let me lift weights in the garage today and not go. Because obviously God is showing you something. Something that he hadn't shown me. Just follow the instruction. There's safety in following the instruction.
the instruction because when we hear cats set our net, we think about money, we think about houses and cars. Sometimes what you pull up from that net is your life. Sometimes what you pull up from that net is your relationship with the Lord. Sometimes what you pull up with that net is a better marriage. Sometimes what you pull up from that net is your children behaving. Sometimes what you pull up with that net is your deliverance. Glory be to God. You've been casting out your net on the wrong side of the boat for far too long. If you follow the instruction and don't refuse the instruction, there's a blessing in being obedient. For the Bible declares that disobedience is as the sin of witchcraft. Glory be to God. You don't have to be around the corner stirring up the witch's brew when you know to do good but you refuse to do good you equate to a witch you equate to a warlock tell somebody follow the instruction follow the instruction I read a story just last week about a man who had a five year old little girl oh glory be to God and the judge orders were for him not to let the mother have unsupervised visitation and he figured he would give her one unsupervised visitation well the mother kidnapped the daughter five years old sodomized the little girl raped the own mother raped her own daughter for one whole hour and then killed the daughter all because the daddy didn't follow the instructions God knows more than you do the judge knows more than you do the pastor knows more than you do you've got to listen to somebody pride comes before all we can't think that we know everything we can't think that we've got it all figured out Humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, and then he'll exalt you in due time. Your disobedience can cost somebody's life. Your disobedience can cost your life. Tell somebody, follow. Follow the instruction. It's only because it is grace and his mercy that we have not been consumed. But I can testify. Right. And then you'll end up sowing seeds in 
the wrong places. Glory be to God. Because you've already determined in your mind who you're not going to give to. If he tells you to get to your enemy, where you get? If you got to know in your head, that's why you don't have it yet. Oh my God, somebody. If you're already saying, when I get my millions, I'm not giving to this person. I ain't giving them nothing. That's why you don't have it yet. Your heart got to be right to reap the harvest. Your heart got to be pure to reap the harvest. It's not about what you want. It's not about how you want it. I'm finished. Everybody's standing. You've got to follow God's instruction. Everybody wants their neck to break. Glory be to God. But are you willing to do what it takes for the neck to break? Yes, yes. Amen. And then on the flip side, Ronnie, we got people, believe it or not, who are afraid of success. Come on. Yes, uh -huh. yes. That's true. You got people working mediocre jobs smarter than all of us in this room but won't move because they are afraid yes. of success. Yes. They are afraid of managing a team. Amen. They are afraid of having a business because they feel as if they would fail. Baby, if God gave you the vision, he'll make provision. If he, if he put the business in your hand, he'll show you how to work the business. He is a teacher. They call him master because he is a teacher. He'll teach you how to operate. He'll teach you what to do. Cast out your net. Everybody lift your hands. Glory be to 